Hi, my name is Joyce Lorenco Pededa and I am an Instructional Technology Coordinator. I decided that I would do a series of videos to talk a little bit about what I'm doing in the classroom, what has worked for me, the things that I've learned over these past few years. This is a very exciting moment in education and I think everybody feels both excited and at the same time overwhelmed at all the expectations schools are putting on us to use technology but we really want to do so in a meaningful and an effective way. So I'm going to do these series of videos on things that have worked, things that haven't worked. Um, and I would love to learn and collaborate with you. So feel free to comment below, um, ask questions, and let's talk about how we are using technology in a way that impacts our student learning and any other topic that you would like to discuss related to education. A couple years ago, I heard, I had the privilege of hearing Lee Crockett talk about the changes and the transformations that technology was going to be going through and is going through and I was inspired and extremely overwhelmed at the same time after his session and when I left his session um, I was talking and a couple other teachers were talking to him as well and we asked okay there's all this that we need to be doing and where do we start and what does it look like on Monday and he said start small and I was like, yeah, start small, start small, this is great. And when I got back to my school on Monday, um, I said, okay, well, what does small look like? And over the past three years, I have learned so much about what works, what doesn't work, and how do you get a school to move forward? One of my favorite quotes is from Arthur Ashe, and he says, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. And I feel that that is really, really powerful. You really need to think about um, what tools do I have today? Not wish, what do I wish I had? Yes, the wish list can be huge, but there's so much we can do where we are right now. One of the first things you need to do is to really divide the software and tools you have into two major categories. I've called them, for me, foundational apps and purpose-driven apps. I'm gonna explain a little bit of both. Foundational apps are apps that you as, an, as a teacher or as an institution, you have decided that everybody is going to be trained on these tools and everybody's going to be using these tools in a consistent manner. And we have um, adopted four foundational tools to use at our school. The first tool you need is a grading tool. You should be consistent in how you grade. So our school, we use Jupyter Grades as the purchase tool and we use this on a regular basis. And check out the links below on Jupyter Grades and see if that would be something that would work for you. So our first foundational app is a grading tool. Our second tool is we've adopted Google Apps for Education. It's a collaborative tool. It's a tool that um, you can easily share documents with. The third thing I would recommend doing is find a learning platform for you to be able to communicate with your students. There are many out there. We have personally loved and adopted Edmodo. It's such a powerful tool. I would definitely check it out. We use this as a digital agenda and I'll be sharing other videos on how we use each of these tools individually. The fourth category for foundational tools or foundational apps that we use at our school would be iTunes U. We have we are a one-to-one -one iPad school and the students are also invited to bring their mobile devices so you'll have kids who have their iPad which is mandatory and then they'll bring their laptops, they'll bring their cell phones and so we encourage them to bring all these tools to our school, the mandatory one being um, their iPad because all our resources are really in iTunes U. We use this as our textbook. We use this as a way to gather the resources they will need for their classroom, their class or their course. This is what we call our foundational suite. Everybody was trained on this and it took a while. We spent about a year with Jupyter Grades and Edmodo working with those platforms. Then we spent um, another year working with the Google Suite. That was our goal for that year was we were going to learn the Google Suite. And then this year we've been working through iTunes U, training our teachers and helping them put their courses in, developing their courses as an iTunes U course. You don't need very many foundational apps. These are just the tools you're going to use consistently across your school. And you need to come as a school and decide what's going to work best for you. I want to talk a little bit about purpose-driven apps. It's exactly what they mean. Purpose-driven apps are very open-ended, okay? It depends on the purpose. So what do you want to accomplish with your students? And that's going to determine what app you're going to use. And I say it's open-ended because 
We let our kids decide as well. For example, we work with note taking. Okay, um, so students need to take notes. We offer some recommendations. Evernote is a tool that we use, Paperport Notes, Penultimate, and other tools for note taking. And we recommend these for our students, but if they have a note taking app that they choose and that they prefer, that's fine. The purpose is to take notes and be able to work um, through the content um, that we're providing. We also work with PDF annotations, okay, similar to note taking. We recommend iAnnotate, it's a paid app. There's also Adobe Reader. So other kids came up with saying, oh, Miss, but I prefer Notability. Anyway, there's, it doesn't matter. As long as you can annotate PDFs, you're good to go. Um, presentation tools. Again, those are, there's so many to choose from. As long as you're able to create um, a presentation that can be shared with your peers and effectively communicate information, you're good to go. Here's a few tips and tricks that I would highly recommend. What has worked for us through trial and error. So here's tip number one. Train, train, train. You must give time to train your teachers, train your students, and train your parents. You must give these people time to understand how to use these tools effectively, and they need time to train. Provide workshops, training sessions. We really had school-wide goals during that year, and so like I said, take your time to train. It will really, really, really help you in the long run. Tip number two. You need to stay organized. Um, create folders, subfolders, anything you need. Google Drive can become a monster if you do not tame that beast. So at the beginning of the school year, we set up our folders, okay? So we share with our students. We talk to our students on how to create a folder for each of their subject areas. And then they're required to share those folders with those respective teachers. And we model how to organize their information in a way that's going to work for them throughout the entire school year. You need to show them what would a sample student folder look like for your class and have them repeat that. It will really, really help their workflow for the remainder of the year. Number three is important, and I know everybody does this or at least should think this, but you need to plan ahead. One of the things that has worked so well for me is to develop templates. Okay, so what are my units going to look like, or what are my folders going to look like, or what um, what's my outline going to look like for each of my classes? I create those, and then I copy paste, copy paste, copy paste for all my other courses. So developing templates and outlines are really huge time savers. And you're going to see this in my other videos when I talk about creating iTunes U courses, setting up my Google Drive folders, those kinds of things. I create a model or a template and I just repeat that over and over again. Another thing when you're planning ahead is to already think what are the tools or apps that I'm going to be using with my kids. Have that all laid out so you're ready to go. Those are my three to-dos. Train, organize, plan ahead. What should you definitely not do? And again, I'm speaking from trial and error and things that were a disaster. Number one, never ever assume tech savviness. Okay, yes, your kids know how to use technology, but probably and most likely not in a way that's effective academically. I really, really, really hope that is very, very clear. Your kids know how to um, play games very well. Yes, they do. They know how to social network um, well as a hobby but not academically they are really they need to be trained in that they need to learn proper and effective application of these tools do not assume here's an ipad have at it they're going to know how to use it in a way that works for them no so do not assume tech savviness that's number one and number two what not to do do not say i can do it all no, no you can't. So do not try to adopt all these tools all at once. You, It's not gonna work. You're going to create anxiety, chaos, panic, all of that with your teachers and your students. You really need to take your time to roll out these tools. So I would recommend focus the majority of your time and energy on foundational apps. Establish those foundational apps train everybody on that, make sure that they know how to use these tools effectively, and do not waste your time and energy on purpose-driven apps. Those apps will come and go. You cannot keep up with all the apps that are coming out, all the tools that are coming out. It's really, really hard, so don't waste time and energy on those. Focus on student learning outcomes. I hope all this was really helpful. Again, 
I would love to hear your feedback. What do you think? What are you using? And what do you really think about foundational versus purpose-driven apps? Thank you for watching. I'll be having other videos coming out um, on my lifelong learning experience as a teacher, as an educator, um, especially in the area of using technology to enhance student learning and my workflow as a teacher. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.